This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about don't tread on my mempool. But first I want to talk about why all the complaining. Purvis Howard had an interesting comment here. He wrote, why does it seem like you and other Bitcoin YouTubers are the only ones constantly complaining? Almost like you're trying to send a warning or pressure message to the core developers. Something along the lines of, we're watching you and if you don't do the right thing, we'll call you out as bad actors, maybe even as traitors to the cause. Are you trying to act as self-appointed watchdogs or guardians of Bitcoin purity? From what I understand, none of the YouTubers in this space can even write code. So who are the crucial software and protocol developers for and against this so-called spam? My response, all Bitcoiners, all Bitcoiners, whether or not they can code, whether or not they have an audience on YouTube or elsewhere, are self-appointed watch, watchdogs of the entire ecosystem, including Bitcoin Core. Being able to code does not give you special status or privileges in Bitcoin. You're welcome to genuflect to imagined authorities if you want to. I'm a self-sovereign Bitcoiner, and I'll do whatever I want without asking anyone for permission. And by having my life savings invested in Bitcoin, I am incentivized to do what's best for the long-term success of Bitcoin. And then he responds, fair enough, but if you and other YouTubers can't read, write, or fully understand the code, then shouldn't the actual debate over protocol level decisions be between those who can? Otherwise, everything else risks sounding like FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, especially to people who can't tell the difference. If you're just a node operator, I don't like that word just a node operator, being a node operator in Bitcoin is the most important thing you can be. If you're just a node operator and I'm just a hardware wallet user, our opinions can become dangerous when they're broadcast to millions of newbies who take them as gospel, almost like it could become misinformation. We don't want to think for ourselves. Do, don't you think that kind of influence comes with responsibility? My response, that's just like saying that just because I don't understand virology, I cannot have an opinion on whether or not to take a vaccine. One can discuss consensus and standardness issues at an abstract level that everyone can understand. And that is without even being able to read code, we can just still discuss these things, what they mean. And yes, influence always comes with responsibility. That's why I'm working 24 seven on this crisis. I also wanna play for you something that Bitcoin Mechanics said along similar lines yesterday. And I would encourage you as well to watch this whole video. It's fantastic. And um, people are standing up to it, uh, all sorts of people, and calling them podcasters or morons or, you know, non-developers, whatever you want. Those are the Bitcoiners, right? If you want to just have a, a currency, you want only, if you want to have a community that's just developers that think they know better than everyone else, think they understand economics better than everyone else because they know C++, I mean, I guess I'll finish with that point, actually. I think he makes a really good point there. So let's move on to the latest developments in the spam wars. First, their highnesses at Bitcoin Core have decided for now not to remove the ability of node operators who use their Bitcoin Core software to run nodes, have decided for now not to remove the ability of node operators to decide for themselves what goes into their own mempools when it comes to op return data size limits. This is a little bit like a doctor reasserting a patient's right to decide what gets put into his own body and what doesn't. I guess that's something that should be celebrated as a victory, but if we're being really honest, it should just be a given. Bodily autonomy and what we might call nodal autonomy are pretty fundamental principles for a community that at least used to pride itself on being cypherpunk. As Bitcoin Kami says here, the idea that you don't get to decide what goes in, into your own node's mempool is a full-blown attack on decent, decentralization. I think that's right. So that's the quote-unquote good news. The bad news is twofold. The first, their highnesses at Bitcoin Core are planning on removing this ability to decide what goes into your own mempool in a future update. As Mechanic points out here, some nuance, marking the configuration as deprecated basically means they plan to remove configurability later on instead in a future pull request, making this even less of a win from our size. I just ask you if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd pause really briefly to ask you to please help to support this channel's educational mission. Hit the subscribe button, that does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video. Share this video with a friend or family member. So piece of bad news number two, their highnesses at Bitcoin Core have decided to blow open the op return filter by raising the default data limit setting from 80 bytes to 100,000 bytes. So if you're like most users and you're not deep in the weeds on this stuff 
and you go and download and run Bitcoin Core without touching the configuration, you will now be able to relay op return spam that is 1,250 times larger than the default that we have now today and 2,500 times larger than the old 40 byte default, which is really where we should be. So that's the really good news for crypto VCs, venture capitalists who want to spam the blockchain with their garbage because most users of Bitcoin Core will just use the default settings. Mechanic has made a bold prediction about this, quote unquote bold prediction. If you make op return limits larger by default in Bitcoin Core, you will see a lot more large op returns in blocks. That seems like a fairly obvious thing to predict. And as Fractal Encrypt says here, spam won't move to op return. Additional spam will begin to use op return. And I think Knut Svanholm has another way of saying the same thing, which I like. Those who think removing the op return limit would reduce the number of spam transactions should look up Javon's paradox. Javon's paradox, adding more lanes to a Los Angeles highway actually increases traffic and congestion rather than decreasing it. Now, here's a possible objection someone listening might have, but wait, aren't spammers just going to use the quote unquote inscriptions method instead since they get a 75% discount on fees when they use witness data? Yes, they might would be the answer, but when you're worried about home intruders, the solution is not to make sure that everyone leaves their bathroom windows wide open in order to deter thieves from using the front door. The real solution, assuming you care about home intruders or spam at all, is to try to secure both the bathroom windows in your house and the front door as well as you can. Luke Dasher has already written a patch that will, that will filter out most of the inscription spam, but their highnesses at Bitcoin Core rejected it because it was quote unquote too controversial. So one could be forgiven for thinking that most Bitcoin Core devs don't care at all about spam mitigation. And people always say we shouldn't group all the Bitcoin Core devs together. Well, if you're one of these Bitcoin Core devs or maintainers and you're against spam in the blockchain, please raise your hand and then I'll stop grouping you with everyone else. But the very silence in this group makes me assume, and the fact they all work in the same building uh, in New York City, or at least most of them do, that makes me assume that there's an echo chamber going on here and they do think very similarly. Then, the, of course, the question, but it's impossible to stop all spam. Yes, it's, it's impossible to stop a really motivated home intruder as well, but that doesn't mean that you don't make it as difficult, dangerous, and expensive for that home intruder as possible. And then here's the thing. Just imagine if your home security system provider was like the Bitcoin Core people and did everything in their power to signal their intent to make life easier rather than more difficult for home intruders, rather than focusing on protecting you, the node runner or the homeowner, would you vote with your feet and switch companies? That's exactly why if you value freedom, you should be dumping Bitcoin Core today and running Bitcoin Knots instead. That's what smart Bitcoiners have been doing at a record rate. This chart of Bitcoin Knots nodes continues to go vertical. And I'll put a link here for some great resources if you want to learn how to install Bitcoin Knots. You don't need any special equipment. You can run it on your existing laptop and then you can link Sparrow Wallet to it and link your hardware wallet to Sparrow. I show you how to do that in these videos. And these, this also contains links to a great video by BTC Sessions on the same topic that's a bit longer and then a video by Cole about using Start9 with Bitcoin Knots. So I'll put a link to this in the description notes below. Feel free to share it widely on X so other people can see it. And then we have a, a bit more of the social response. We have Greg Maxwell saying, in my opinion, there does appear to be a dishonest and inauthentic social media campaign against Bitcoin Core. There have been a dozen threads on Reddit on the matter, which is pretty sad because it's mostly a nothing burger. This is Cali retweeting what G Max, Greg Maxwell is saying. And I thought that Lysander under coercion here had a great response to, to G Max. What G Max got right was a social media campaign. What he got wrong was quote unquote dishonest and authentic, inauthentic people doing this. It turns out when you belittle, silence, condescend plebs as pesky peasants, they seem not to take your ship. They seem to organize and push back on elitism. It turns out that we do want control of our own nodes. Turns out we found out your software sucks. We're not here for number go up. We're not here for cool tech. We're here for economic freedom. We are not here for an expensive, inefficient, glorified database. We're here to change the world and we have only one shot at this. This could be a great opportunity to self-reflect, but it's clear that you missed it. And then to conclude, Tomer has a very good point here. 
wondering why your favorite Twitter personality is in favor of raising op return size to allow for ZK rollups on Bitcoin or some other use, one explanation could be their sellouts. This is Michelle Weekly saying she just got a DM offering her money to promote ZK rollups on Bitcoin. So this is a good time to look at the, your favorite Bitcoin influencer, look at their sponsors, see who's paying them, and then see their opinion on spam on Bitcoin. I have no sponsors. My only revenue from this business is YouTube income. I sell some books and I also sell some paid courses on my uh, on my home site at bitcoinuniversity.com, but I'm not beholden to any vendors, any sponsors, anyone like this. So this is my unvarnished opinion. I'll also put a link to the two pull requests, the one that's been closed and the one that's still open. So you can take a look at them if you want to look in more detail. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.